Welcome to Depictions Media Radio. Welcome to Community Partners, the show about community leaders and those who inspire others to do great things in our world. back to Community Partners. Uh, this is a Depictions Media uh, radio project, and we're here today with um, author, uh, novelist, and um, debt, re- debt reduction coach, Karen McGill. Um, so I guess the, the first thing to, to get at to get at this conversation, Karen, um, and welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, um, hey, this isn't the first time we 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 faced off in the interview. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we've done uh, that a few times. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we're, uh, we're we're old hat at this, and 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 really good friends. Uh, but yeah, and he he still keeps talking to me. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I can't, I can't figure out why you keep taking my calls. <laughs> so, so how did you, how did you come to be, uh, to be um, coaching in this particular niche? And um, what do, is there a story behind debt for you? Well, for this, we we'll have to go back to nineteen ninety nine. Mm-hmm. I've been working part-time as a sales clerk for minimum wage, and I got a job with the federal government. I went from minimum wage part-time to making $20,000 a year. And then I more than doubled that six months later when I got a different job in the government. Mm -hmm. And I was spending my money faster than I was making it because I was getting a lot on credit. You won't believe how willing people are to give you credit when they find out you work for the government. Yeah, because <laughs> after all, it's supposed to be guaranteed employment, right? Security. Oh yeah, well, yeah, and that looks really attractive to the banks, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, about nine days before my one-year anniversary, I woke up partially paralyzed on one side of my body. I was right. diagnosed with multiple sclerosis on the anniversary, my one year anniversary. And by the end of September, I had to go on disability and take a 30% cut in pay. Right. But remember, I'd been spending so much money. And I hung on two years, but in 2002, I ended up filing for bankruptcy. Okay. And you'd think that would be the end of my story, right? So that's what I went through. But. Once I was able to get credit again, I found myself spending the same way I had been that got me into trouble. I was buying so many things I didn't need just because I was bored or lonely or stressed or whatever. I would buy stuff, put it on credit. So there's emotional reasons why people uh, spend more than what they have? Oh, yes, definitely. A boredom, I have a ebook uh, called 10 Reasons We Overspend. And it goes into, and there's only 10 there. But there are so many reasons that people, emotional reasons why people spend. Right. And my theory, my theory is I have a five-step process that I created. Because when I found myself getting into debt, into trouble again, I thought, no, I'm not going to go through another bankruptcy. So I just put the brakes on, did some learning, and created the system. Right. So, because um, I've known a few people that, that they got seriously into debt and everything, and uh, I guess the common avenues are, it, like you said, you you went through um, a bankruptcy, and the other the other common one is it, like the debt reduction. Uh, uh, consumer credit canceling—that's what it's called, right? Mm-hmm. 
So yeah, that's where I went. Like I went to a credit counselor when I filed for bankruptcy, and mm-hmm. they advised bankruptcy because at that time it didn't look like I had any future. Well, yeah, I didn't have a future, financial future at all. And that was because of the the uh, the disability from um, from from your MS, right? Yes. Okay. So, 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 um, okay. So, so you went through it yourself, and you and you you have you you've now written written the book, um, and what was um, what, what was the name of your book again? Ten reasons we overspend. Ten reasons you overspend. That's right. And you and and you break and down in the book why why reasons why we overspend, right? Yeah, it's a short ebook that mm-hmm. it's you can get a complimentary copy when you sign up to my introductory course that teaches you it's an email course that teaches you the five steps I used. Okay. To save myself. End up saving myself over four hundred thousand dollars in projected interest costs. Right. By yep. this system, so Cool. So, how does your your coaching how is your coaching program different than than the uh, consumer credit or any any of the other programs that are out there to help people with with their debt? Well, the first thing I want to do when I talk to a new client is I want them to tell me what dream they would accomplish if they didn't have debt weighing on them, well, and I want them to. Always keep that in mind as we go through the other step, the other steps. Okay. So because the first step is like say getting the dream, and then we want to get control of the debt and get it starting to go down. You know, save you some money, get it paid off, and then we'll work on we can work on your emotional side, mm-hmm. why you're spending, and work on the dream eventually too find out what you need to get it it's right. more than just paying off that debt when you're working with me so um what um what what more comes it comes with it and and i guess what's real what i really want to get at is why why focus on on a dream to help you reduce your debt why focus on which? I'm sorry. Why focus on on a on a dream if you're trying to reduce your debt? Because one, just paying off debt can get pretty monotonous. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it's going to feel good when you realize how much money you're saving and all this, but there's once you do that, what's next? If you keep that dream in the back of your head, or you've got it posted somewhere. It's going to inspire you to keep going because, okay, fine, you can get that debt paid off, which is great, and that may be your main dream. Mm -hmm. But then once that's done, you've got something else to go after. Right, right. So focusing on the dream, um, it it helps people just just keep going rather than if if they hit a wall, uh, giving up. That's my belief, yes. Wow. That's that's pretty powerful. Yeah. So cuz uh, I guess the mindset of people is 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 to keep going is uh, you want them to want them to keep going and you want them to succeed whereas other programs um they 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 don't they don't circle around on something outside of them they, that they could that they could could build that's even bigger, right? That's what I find. And I found, like, when I went through the bankruptcy, Mm -hmm. um, there, I don't remember any emotional help or anything. It was just getting rid of, like, even the credit counselor. It was just trying to file for bankruptcy. And then the bankruptcy, okay, that went through, and then it was like, okay. But there's still that thing in your head, you know, the mental, emotional spending, the mental block that's making you spend. Yeah, because uh, I've seen a couple of a couple of these. On, they're they're on, of course, the uh, the big TV shows and everything, where um, they 
they they go on air and 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 they say, well, see, you've just been so irresponsible, and and this is the reason why you're in the trouble you are, and we need to teach you responsibility and and the the and actions that are responsible to to your own income is and it doesn't seem like like uh, if you have somebody focusing on a dream, it doesn't seem like you you're trying to do that. You're trying to make them rise. And, and heal like some some emotional stuff that's going on with them. Is that right? That's right. And I don't want people to feel bad because they're in debt because it happens to a lot of us. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Right. And that's part of the problem in our society is that people don't talk about it until it's too late. Mm-hmm. So my goal is to eventually get people talking about debt and money Right from the start, like to being very open about it and okay. finding ways to help themselves immediately. Okay, so you're not like the uh, the 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 others who want you to feel feel ashamed because you you got in debt and 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 totally irresponsible for you to feel like in debt. So, okay, I'm going to become your new client, and what is it that I can expect to see from your coaching? What you get with when you sit when you sit with me, you get like first first session can be anywhere up to two hours while we go over everything. Because I'm going to make sure that you get your head out of the sand and find your numbers. And mm-hmm. I want to see them. I want to see how much you're in debt. I want to see all your interest rates. I want to see um, what you own. See if there's anything that we can leverage. I want to see all of that. Right. And we're always going to be focusing not only on the debt, but keeping that dream alive as well. Because there's going to be times when you think you're not going to be able to do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get started, like, within the first couple of weeks, I'm going to want you to be looking for lower interest rates. To right. save some money. Yeah. And then... Once you do that, what I can show you calculators and we can work out how much money you saved if you stick to the plan. Mm-hmm. You'll have weekly meetings with me, one hour on Skype or Zoom or telephone, whichever is more convenient, where we'll go over the homework that you had to do for the week before, any questions you have, and we'll set more another homework that's going to keep you progressing to getting the debt paid off and to accomplishing that goal eventually. So another thing I'm going to want you to do once we get the debt all in order is figure out what you all need to accomplish your dream and figure out why you overspent. See if we can find all the reasons so that you can be more powerful in stopping it yourself. So you, you're not looking for, for some, so, something where um, we don't have to expect, okay, so I do, went off and I went on my same old habits again, and then I have to call Karen again back again to, to help me a second time to, to get me out of debt because, hey, I couldn't control myself again. You want to go through this one time with them, so that they they feel empowered to 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 live a a really abundant life that's exactly it because i do not believe that we're powerless against debt i don't believe that we're powerless against anything okay so and i want people to realize that yeah so your your program is really set aside from 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 a lot of the others in the fact that you that you feel that people can be empowered I feel people can be empowered. I feel, I feel people can get over the debt spending. I mean, I know I struggle uh, every day. Well, mm-hmm. not every day, but I struggle a lot with going. Okay, no, you know, remember what you've learned about money. So that's part of the problem too. Is we aren't taught about money in schools. Yeah, that's, I mean, one of our, that's really one of our true. favorite authors. Off- one of our favorite authors has said that Robert Kiyosaki. Yes, yes, yeah. He 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 has said that he's he has 
actually uh, contacted school districts in in his area and told them he's like why aren't you teaching teaching people about how money really works right yeah as yeah. it's one of the things I because I'm also a speaker I want to get in eventually get into schools mm-hmm. and start talking to them at that age before they get their credit card and talk to them about how to deal with credit cards. Right. Cool. So, um, you know, it, it, Karen, I'm, I'm, let's uh, let's end it there for a second, so we can get to a, a sponsor break and let people know that they're listening to. Um, Community Partners, a Depictions Media uh, radio project, and uh, we'll be right back in a few seconds um, after these messages um, from our sponsors. Um. Welcome to Depictions Media Radio. Diane Hume has a personal goal to help one million people find their dreams in abundance and fulfillment. I just attended Diane Hume's bootcamp, uh, Live Your Life Now. And what I can say, for one day, it's some kind of transformational experience all of us got. It's shifting our mind and it's, it's awesome. I won't tell you too much because you have to experience that. And it's about dreams, about relationships with yourself, about affirmations and about going to the next level. Come to the Dream Receivers Boot Camp and realize your dreams. Type in dianehume.net right now. You are looking for success with your business and products. Go with the best, the professional voice, Earl Thomas the Voice. I will create more money, clients, and success for you. Over 70 businesses chose my voice to advance their business, products and profits look on my linkedin profile for 27 recommendations from satisfied clients i look forward to hearing from you at duke earl at shaw.ca that's d u k e e a r l at shaw.ca i am earl thomas the voice creating vocal paradise for your exact needs And welcome back to uh, Community Partners, a Depictions Media uh, radio project. And we're sitting here with Karen McGill, and she is telling us about um, her debt reduction coaching. And she's written a book, uh, 10 Reasons Why We Overspend. Um, Karen, Karen is a wonderful author and uh, a novelist, and, she, and she's written many other books. But this one is especially dear to her because... Um, she wants to help people that work with her get out of debt, stay out of debt, and achieve a big dream along the way. So, um, so uh, Karen, uh, welcome back to the show again. Um, and I want to ask you a question about your um, experience with debt and debt reduction. Okay. What so, did you want to ask? So, um, how, what what makes what makes you different from all the other experts again um, that that don't believe in in things like uh, debt shaming and things like that? Uh, why do you why is it that you think that the, that your program is superior to theirs uh, and you'll be able to help more people um, without uh, shaming people for being in debt and telling them that they're irresponsible and things like that because they got into debt? Well, first of all, I'm still in debt. I'm still paying off old debt. Mm -hmm. So I'm down in the trenches with them. I know what it's like. Mm -hmm. I go through the same thing with the emotional part, trying not to spend, catch myself when I'm going to buy something that isn't really necessary. Right. I can relate. But I can relate to them. There's a lot of people out there that have great knowledge, but they've never been in debt themselves. 
or you see ones that oh yeah they were in debt and they paid it off and now they've got this great shiny future right i mean and that's great i'm really happy for them and i love the ones that have never been in debt and have all this money and knowledge because i can learn from them oh yeah i'm always learning something right right but they actually be able to sit down to, and talk to somebody that can is not going to be how do, how do you put it not going to be aloof it's going to go yeah I know okay so you did that now fine you you did it you spent more than you meant to why did you do it do you, do you figure out your why mm-hmm. I don't want people yeah. Pardon? Yeah. I was going to say, and that why it becomes really important to, to, to helping them stay out of debt. Is that right? Yes. If they can start figuring out their triggers, just like an alcoholic or a drug addict has triggers that makes them drink and do drugs, a lot of people that overspend have triggers mm-hmm. that make them overspend. Um, you've all heard the therapy, the, uh, phrase retail therapy yes yes <laughs> you know a wife gets into a fight with her husband and she goes shopping not yeah. to be yeah. sexist or anything but I, I think it's usually women that do the retail therapy um I, but, I think I think maybe it's just different versions of the re- retail therapy one one winds up it at, at say um some big department store buying buying shoes and and dresses where the other one winds up uh bu- buying it in uh in some uh tool shed uh buying yeah. a bunch of, <laughs> buying a bunch of hardware <laughs> yeah so it, it, i mean it's for both sexes so yeah I shouldn't have said it, just yeah, it's not, yeah it's it, it's but the thing is is that same idea though right yeah and you don't have the money, so you put it on credit. Or you do have the money, but it's reserved for something else. Mm-hmm. And you spend it, and then you've got to scramble to find money for that. That was... It's a vicious circle. Mm-hmm. So. And I want to help people stop it. So, okay, you you mentioned other people that, that, that might know more than you in the the financial field and um and that you're always learning it's like how long have you actually been in in uh the financial field how long have i been yeah how long have you actually been had had some kind of work work in the financial field well don't hold this against me okay (laughs) but the job i had when i got sick was a tax collector Oh no! Not the uh, tax guy, <laughs> girl. <laughs> oh yeah, girl. <laughs> and, <laughs> I've also um, like kept books for lots of different companies, oh. been involved with companies, and done basic bookkeeping. And I've always had an aptitude towards that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So it's just been a natural progression. And they say, I'm disabled by MS. Mm -hmm. But I'm seeing so many people who are disabling themselves with debt. Well, that's that's kind of interesting because I don't think I've heard any other coach ever uh, compare debt to some sort of, of, of a disability that that um because you, you've done this a few times you've actually gone gone back and saying that there's emotional reasons for overspending you and you've compared uh compared debt to to a to to a disability because it's a, it's a symptom of something else you've done that a few times why do you feel that it's, way well it's i say you're disabled by debt because the debt is stopping you from doing what you want. Mm-hmm. It's stopping you from 
And when I'm talking debt, I'm not talking mortgages and cars. I'm talking the unsecured debt, like credit cards and lines of credit. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of times, credit cards, especially credit cards, <laughs> with some of their interest rates, and they're taking so much of your money that you're unable to use it for something you really want. And to me, that's disabling yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Hmm. So, um, that's, 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 that's just really a really powerful statement, and uh, it it almost it almost rendered me speechless. <laughs> Not good for a radio host, sound to be to wind up speechless, but um, <laughs> but there sounds it sounds like sounds like um, it, it, Karen Karen isn't it, it, you you really care about care about the people that you work with and. That you're so mm-hmm. empathetic towards them that that you that, that you'll go through great pains to actually see see that they succeed, right? Yes, it's like my course is my program is the ninety day turnaround, ninety days to financial stability. So that's three months, but that doesn't mean that after three months I just drop you if you're not paying me anything. I will check in with you. I mean, and I'm always around. As long as I have the time and can help, I will. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to... It's the problem with a lot of these programs, I think. People think that they get in it and they're going to be dropped at the end. Well, no. I'm going to still help you if I can. Right. So, um, what what makes you what makes you your program so special? And and what is it that um, that I should see in myself and uh, and maybe my debt that um, that 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 I should just feel like I should I should jump in and work with you. Well, first of all, you have to see that you have the power over your debt. It doesn't have the power over you. Mm-hmm. You have, you are, uh, I know you, so I know you've got a good mind. Mm-hmm. And I know that you, you're a logical person. We all are. We make the choice. And working with me, I'm going to help you to learn how to make better choices. Choices are going to keep you out of debt or get you out of debt first. Keep you reasonably out of debt and help you get to your other goal. The one that's going to make your life all, (laughs) not sound corny, but all rosy and everything. The one that you really want to do that you're letting debt stop you from. Right. That's, that's, you, you, it sounds like you, you, uh, the, okay, to quote a movie, um, it, 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 you want people to have a wonderful life. Yeah, I do. And one little thing I should say, though, the, the all that may not be accomplished in three months, mm-hmm. but you will, you will be on the way. Right. And if you want to continue to work with me, we can talk about it at the end of three months. But first, let's get you, get you started. So we all got to start somewhere. Yeah. So the so the first three months, it, it's 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 a jump start to 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 what their their um, their their bigger life is going to be with with their big dream. And knowing that they can achieve it because they have control over over their mind and and their and and their spending, right? That's it. Wow. 
And we'll work on ways to pay off the debt. It's not, I'm not just going to hit you with one thing and then leave you hanging. We'll work on different ways to get it paid off. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hold you accountable to everything you say you're going to do, okay? Wow. So, um, to... So the accountability is also um, and also an, an important ingredient in in um, in your coaching, right? Correct, because if you don't have someone to hold you accountable, you can just do the research and discover everything and do it yourself. But a lot of times you won't get it done because there's no way of holding you accountable. I mean, I know personally, I find that with a lot of the. You, you sign up for programs and then you never get them done. Life gets in the way or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I know, know a lot of people that, that they do this, that, that they find like, oh, hey, that looks like a really cool coaching program. And they... Um, and they'll find the find the book that revolves around it. They go buy the book, and they read one chapter, and maybe they might implement part of that one chapter, and then throw the rest of the book away. Yeah, it's implementation and accountability. Yeah, I mean, with the internet, we've got we're being drowned in noise and information and everything. Mm -hmm. And you and I have had talked about this before. And <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> unless there's someone to help you sort through it and just keep you on the one path, keep you focused on the one area, it's useless to get all this information at you. Okay. Um, and I'm going to agree with you on that point. And. You know what? We're we're starting to run out of time here, so I'm going to ask you um, two questions. And mm -hmm. one question is: If you t uh, can you tell everybody how to get a hold of you so they can get started working with you and their big dream and reducing their debt, and um, maybe one last golden nugget that they might have to actually get started down that path. Um, while they're waiting to get a hold of you. Grab a pen and paper right now to collect valuable contact information for Karen McGill so you can contact her and get started with your debt reduction today. Have a show idea? Contact us at Depictions Media. Email your show idea to michael at depictionsmedia.com today. If you go to my website, www.karenmcgill.com, you can contact me through there. Mm -hmm. You can also sign up for the introductory course, of which is the five steps that I used. It's a seven-day email course. Okay. And for P and go a nugget I would say find lower interest rates. That's how I saved all the money. Right. Okay. And you can do that by like say different credit card or talk to your current provider. Okay. Cool. So lower interest lower interest rates uh help help us save a lot of money in the long run. Cool. Yeah, and then, then we can work on other methods to get it paid off. But awesome. do that first and see how much you're going to save. Okay, great. Well, thanks for joining us today. And as always, it's it's, it's a pleasure talking to you. Um, and uh, I'm going to set you off on, on the rest of your day. Um, thank you for joining us again. Um, and thank you for everybody out there listening for joining uh, me and Karen today uh, for today's episode of Community Partners, a Depictions Media Radio project. And um, if you if uh, you have any other e other feedback, please do email me at uh, depictionsmedia uh, dot com. It's Michael at depictionsmedia dot com. Send me an email. And if you have a show idea. 
or somebody that needs to be honored on this show, um, again, e email me at um, michael at depictionsmedia.com. And thank you for everybody, and we'll see you next time.